kids and what you can do with phones. Isn't it? <laughs> I know. That's... Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown, Ohio. Um, we are here for the 109th Allied Artists of America ex exhibition, juried exhibition, annual juried exhibition to see the award winners and the board members who are right now at the Butler Institute. And if you really, you really need to see the show in person, but we're gonna, right now, <laughs> I am honored, and it's really be a little bit noisy here in the gallery because the opening reception is just about to start. So that's why I'm talking kind of loud, but hopefully it's loud enough. Um, I am thrilled, honored, and pleased to introduce you to Dean Mitchell, who is a watercolor and portrait, figurative art and cityscape <laughs> legend, who um, is the winner of the Butler Institute of Art Purchase Prize, which is the top prize in this show. And I am thrilled to, thrilled to have you here in front of your painting. Um, you have have a little bit of history with Allied Artists of America. I know you, you've won a gold medal in the past sometime. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, what I was wondering, what does it mean to you to have your work acquired into the Butler Institute of American Art? Well, for, for me, it's really, uh, it's, well, first of all, it's a huge honor to be in the show at all because it's a very uh, highly competitive show. And second of all, anytime you have a museum, your work winds up in a museum, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to happen for any artist. Uh, and so to still be alive to see this happen is, is very <laughs> that thrilling. That too, that too, and, yeah. Uh, this is a, a beautiful museum. I've never been to the Butler. Oh, okay. And I've had a okay. chance to, to walk around and see what's in the collection. And the collection is so extensive in terms of variety, in terms of the caliber of artists and the work in there. I'm just thrilled and honored to be a part of this okay. American collection. Okay. And one of the one of the things I have I've seen you speak before, um, and I've seen you speak at the Portrait Society of America where you won their gold medal. So you've got a couple gold medals at home, which is which is perfect. Um, and you talked about many of your struggles growing up as a young black artist who wanted to grow up to be a grown up black artist. Can you talk a little bit about some of you know your influences and, and experiences, your experiences and all that? And yeah, well, you know, first of all, I. You know, I was raised by my grandmother. People okay. know most about my life and my story. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had a junior high school teacher, and there was a lot of people in the community that were very supportive in different okay. ways. Okay. But my mother was the first out of my mom's uh, children to go to college, so she said, a black man cannot make a living selling pictures. Okay. So she wasn't very, very encouraging. But I had a junior high school teacher, two high school teachers that were very, very encouraging. And uh, But I had no idea the complexities of, of what it took to be a, a professional artist right, until right. I got into Columbus College of Art and Design in Ohio. Ohio. And then I realized that black well, artists. Right. You have Ohio. Yes. Oh, and I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah, here yeah. I am in Ohio. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, so and that's even more thrilling to be in the collection. Uh -huh. So, but you know, as I learned more about art and the different things, uh, it was an enormous struggle for me because I didn't know very much about any role models. Uh, we weren't in the, in the history books. Uh -huh. So, so I began to start questioning, you know, whether I should continue. Right. Uh, but I had such a great love for it, and I thought, well, maybe this could be my calling in some ways, mm -hmm. and maybe perhaps I can help be part of that authentic voice for yes. people of color. Exactly. But aside from just people of color, just to be a great American painter. Mm -hmm. And so, again, uh, not always just focusing on race, but focusing on the quality, because what I'm finding out is that when you do quality work, Though it's been difficult for me when you do quality work, there are collectors and there are museums who are looking and who have uh, have a deeper sensibility, and there are more African American curators and directors that are coming mm -hmm. into the fold now. So it's right. a, a little bit of a different uh, landscape than when I was coming. Out. There yes. wasn't very much opportunity at all. Right. Uh, it was right. A, it was a, it was a struggle. Almost got thrown out of school for lack of having two hundred dollars. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so, so I've had my struggles with it. Yeah. Yes. And these yeah. types of shows, I will, I will, I will have to say. 
honestly and truthfully, without shows like what Alan Earth is, I would never have made it in the landscape. Okay, that's a, that's amazing and interesting. And I I I love jury shows. Yeah. Many people have trouble with jury shows. I love I'm them a too. big fan of jury shows because it really is like you're just judged on that one piece of work. Absolutely. And not your resume and not your history right. and nothing. It's that just here's a piece of work. And sometimes, and sometimes you, know, you get love in. It, leave it. Sometimes you get in, and sometimes you don't. You know, because I'm judging shows. Course, I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't be discouraged. Because sometimes you get in something, you get in something else. Mm -hmm. And not only that, uh, you know, it, it allows me to see what else that's being done in the contemporary right. art world. Right. Exactly. You know, on a on a large scale. You yeah. know, and it can be encouraging. You can also learn mm -hmm. that way. You can learn something about yourself and your work. And you have to realize too, there's always room for growth. So right. when you get rejected, it doesn't mean that. That you're you're not trying, you're not growing. Right. It's just, it's just, yeah. Well, and if you're always getting accepted, you're then, then, yeah, too low. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. People think I don't yeah. get rejected. People, I've been rejected before too. Just want to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Now, speaking of being accepted, you yeah. have been accepted into in 2016 into one of my holy grail shows that I keep applying to. You know. <laughs> Well, the day's coming um, for your portrait of Bob Ragland right here, which is, and and as far as how I've come to know you as an artist, I've known you as a portrait painter. Yes. And so you have a lot of portraits, which are amazingly beautiful, and they're they're very poignant. Um, how come you entered a cityscape instead of a portrait into this show? Well, actually, uh, it's sort of a, you know, I do a large body of work, first of all, and I also want, don't want to be pigeonholed as working in one particular subject. Okay. You know, okay. and so it also enhances my skills uh, in terms of what I'm doing with the space, uh, and so... I, and I like a challenge of trying different things, different subjects. Right. Now, of course, doing portraits is a little bit different. Uh, as you know, that painting did put me in front of the President of the United States, but I didn't get the portrait job. But uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, what what happened was, you know, for me, you know, I come from a small rural town, mm -hmm. you know, a place where people thought I'd never make a living. And there I was in front of the President of the United States to possibly paint So you did get to meet I did get to meet both of them. Excellent. I got to meet both oh, of them. Wow. And uh, I explained my process, uh -huh. but uh, but the bottom line of it is, for me to do a portrait, uh, I really need to know the person. I need to sit down and talk and engage them to understand more about them, right. to be able to capture the depth of what I'm trying to do as a painter. Uh -huh. right. uh, if I'm not allowed that ability, then I can't transfer that type of presence right. in a world. Right. You know, so it's, it's a portrait or is a is a whole different yeah. thing to capture someone's persona versus my going and taking a quick picture of you and then do a rendering. Right. It's just not how I work. So exactly. it's, it's a little bit of a different process. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever get people asking you to do commissions? I do and I and I and I normally don't. Okay. Uh, part of it is because I choose my own subjects. Mm -hmm. And secondly of all, people also have a perception about themselves and how they want to be perceived. Right. And so that is not my goal as a painter. Uh -huh. uh, it's not always about a likeness. Sometimes there's a certain energy that's uh -huh. being transferred while I'm doing the portrait. So different things change why and, and, and also too, you know, I am a kind of painter where I may start off with a certain kind of background, it changes, it shifts, it, it does a lot of different things. And so when I do get people who, when I have done things, I tell people, I have to have complete control because I'm a very intuitive painter. Right, so, right. Yeah, so sometimes some, yeah, portrait so. commissions Portrait is a little, are... a little different than <laughs> I pick my own subject, and then sometimes it looks like them, and sometimes it's uh -huh, not. Right. Sometimes, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not always about a likeness. It's about a certain kind of energy that I'm after. Right, of, exactly. About a moment. Exactly. So, yeah. But, and so the, the portraits that you, that you do, one of the things that you've spoken about is that um, you, are, you are trying to show, because all the portraits that I've seen that you do are of black people. Mm -hmm. I, I have not seen yet uh, that you have painted a non, a, mm -hmm. a, you know, white person. Um, and one of the things that, that you've spoken about is that you're trying to bring visibility Yes. And and um, you know humanity and, yes, and everything, which which I absolutely love. I mean that is exactly what you know a portrait. That's like the yes. highest thing that a portrait can do. Can you you know expound on that a little bit? Well, I'll, I'll have to clarify this. Okay. You okay. Know, uh, I've done a lot of 
work of my lifetime, uh -huh. and uh, and I have painted plenty of white people. Okay, so, yes, yeah, okay. so I, I didn't want know. people to know that. Okay. Yes, right. uh, actually, okay. I painted quite a few when I was an instructor at the, the Kansas City Art Institute. Okay. okay, I was involved with uh, some of the people who did the Renaissance Festival there. Okay, I did a lot of paintings of characters in the Renaissance, and okay. very few of those were African Americans who were yeah. dressed in costume. Right, and this was an event that was raising money for the Kansas City Art Institute. Oh, and okay. most of those figures were white. Mm -hmm. And the galleries at that time that was handling my work, I could sell, I could sell them like this. Okay. They were selling as fast okay. as I could paint them. All right. uh, but That's when I started showing African American figures, mm -hmm. uh, people were slow to buy them. And most of my audience has been, been Caucasian. Right. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, and so, what I did was I backed away at some point. Once people, once I started getting known. Uh, I backed away from painting Caucasian people, mm -hmm. and people weren't portrait by me, but if, as long as I was doing Caucasian people, I couldn't barely sell the paintings of people of color. Right. So yeah. I backed away and I stopped painting them all together, and okay. eventually I started getting them to buy. So it's a very, it was a little right. bit of a manipulation on my part to get that to get that image into mainstream. Right, right. Uh, yeah, into once you have the audience. Because, yes. I mean, one of, one of the things that I've always thought is like, you build, you want to, um, make your art to sell your, you make your name, you can make your art to sell your art, or you can make your name to sell your art. Right. And you made your name to sell your art. Yes, I began, to manipulate, <laughs> I began to manipulate yeah. my audience into looking at the, the full complexity uh -huh. of the African American figure. Right, yeah. Uh, which is why I do portraits, I put them in landscapes, I put them in urban scenes, I put them in their, in their natural environments, mm -hmm. uh, to show their full humanity right. and the spaces yeah. they're, they're, that they are mm -hmm. occupying. I don't That's, just bring them into my studio and set, I want to do them in their space. Right. Okay. Uh, that that, that yeah. carries on a whole different kind of commentary. Right. Exactly. Yes. And that's that's a that's a wonderful mission. That's also one of the it's things I talked about. <laughs> one of the things I talked about. Okay, with yeah. Max was the um, Max Ginsburg was saving the saving the world one painting at a time yes. as sort of a concept mm -hmm. where you're trying to do a larger thing than just. Express beauty and calm yes, and absolutely. peace, and absolutely. you know you're yes. you're trying. You've also got a a larger message. And yes, we a have larger, a full range of missions. Yeah, we have a full range of ex expressions, and we mm -hmm. and as a society, uh, as an artist, uh, it's up to us to, in some ways, you know, in some ways to be somewhat of a moral compass, if that right. makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Because we are the recorders of history, we are the innovators of new jobs and ideas and concepts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so the modern world as, as we exist now in terms of architecture, in terms mm -hmm. of beauty, would not exist without the creative imagination exactly. of the artist. Yes. And exactly. as you know, Leonardo yeah. da Vinci was experimenting with flying and all these things way mm -hmm. before the Wright brothers and the airplane right. came into being. So artists uh, also uh, merge into medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it, it's, you know, art encompasses a lot of things mm -hmm. that people do not understand. I think that people have to understand. The art is is what we are. It's, mm -hmm. it's how we survive as a culture. Right, right. And, how we and we can we have the power to plant images in people's of heads yes. of what the, of what they think of. Like, okay, Santa Claus was yes. made up by Haddon Sundblom in the 1950s, drinking Coke, and that's Santa Claus. You know what else I was going to say? Jesus, you know yeah. all the. I was going to tell George you Washington, too. all these people, yeah. I was, going, I was just going to tell you about uh, George Washington Carver, if you know mm -hmm. who George Washington yes. Carver was. Mm -hmm. A great scientist. His first love was to be an artist. Oh, you know, okay. Yes. All right. you know, and so he was a, a big inspiration for me. But uh, you don't know, and he didn't pursue it because, again, the, the inability to make a living from it. Okay. So he went into yes. the sciences. Which but is... here you had this brilliant scientist who was also an artist. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, it carries over. That it's, creative yeah. process carries over mm -hmm. even into medicine. So yeah. Wow. Things, so. Well, wonderful. This was an awesome interview. Now, one of the questions that I posed to Max before, and I also posed to you, if there's a painting from this beautiful like, Allied Artists 109th show that particularly struck you that you might want to talk Well, about. actually, there are actually, well, Max is certainly dead, okay, okay. Uh, because it's very relevant to, mm -hmm. the, to the times. Mm -hmm. okay. I, do, I do tend to look at things that reflect uh, the modern world. What's okay. happening? Okay. So I do look at that. Aside from yeah. technical yeah. ability and composition and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, and there are other things that are you know it's just an extraordinary watercolor too here, which is mm -hmm. like which one? Which one the, is that? The one up front here with uh, the popcorn, which okay. is you know very okay. Very, very, Since it's close, we yeah, can very, we can walk over. I mean the skill and set. The skill set is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very photorealist, but you know I think the way the way the artist is handling the medium is pretty extraordinary. Yeah, that is. Yeah. It's extraordinary. 
But there's a lot of things in here. I really like this one too. This one. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but it's it's kind of. I guess it's I guess it's I guess it's the energy. Uh -huh. Even though it's objects. Yeah. You know, there's something about. I know it's not a Jackson Paul, uh -huh. okay. but there's something about the the the, 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 the chaoticness of it. Uh -huh. There's something about yeah. it. There's something about yeah, the chaoticness of it and the, the texture and stuff. There's a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it being busy because uh -huh. this is how we are as a culture. Right. You know, right. Cluster. We're yeah. just clustered with things and we're just absorbing things all the time. Uh -huh. We even look at technology. Yeah. It's hard for us to even quiet our minds. I guess, it's a, right, it's a, exactly. All the stimuli was so much. Exactly. This just speaks a lot, a lot to me about, you know, I don't know, food and excess. And I just see a lot of things in that in the modern world. Mm -hmm. I know something mm -hmm. about that that speaks to my modern system. And something that's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm going to snatch the camera from the cameraman because the cameraman is one who painted this one. Yes. That is Steve Shearing. Yeah, it's very, very interesting work. <laughs> it's, it's very, very interesting. Yeah, I, so I love it, actually. That's, that's amazing. And the perspective is unusual. That, right, uh, exactly. It's very unusual. Just the handling of it. The, the complexities, and the, it's just really, it's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. it just, it's almost like it's, it's a continuation. It doesn't stop, it just, yeah, okay. Can, this okay. is like one yeah. of these endless things that could just go on and on. Right. There's no yeah. end to it. Uh -huh. you know, it's uh -huh. really fascinating. Yeah, of course, gorgeous. Max's work is just extraordinary. Well, you that's, know what? Since Max finished that's, that's by talking about yours, I'm, let's I'm, go over and you well, can say a couple things about Max. Yeah, it's just that, you know, it's the it's, it's the emotion in it. Right, it's, the, it. it's the it's the okay. gestural okay. quality of it. It's I just see so much humanity. I see okay. new birth. I see. Struggle. I see trauma. I see it's possibility people have been thrown out of their homes. I see different generations there. Uh, you know, it's just really, really, really interesting. Beautiful. Yeah, the gesture. And this, I mean, this is her eyes. Is this very haunting, mysterious quality about her. Like she doesn't know quite what's happening. Right, right. Which is exactly yeah. the feeling he yeah. was trying to yeah. trying yeah. to impart. It's, it's beautiful. Though. Yeah. It's exquisite. So let's go back over to your painting, and we will we will finish up. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much. This was a wonderful discussion. I'm going to have you sign my <laughs> sign your page. I send for one of these every year because you know how like you submit and you also can do the add a book to it. So that's why I have one of these for every year. But I would get it anyway. But um, thank you so much to Dean Mitchell for uh, for this wonderful interview and congratulations on having your painting acquired. I will at least be able to whenever I come here see this. Hopefully it'll be up and out. Oh, I feel so thrilled to have you. I here. mean, this museums so always have the big, you know, the storage. They have a lot of things in storage and very little out on the walls, yeah. but they don't seem to change things too much here. So like it's out. It's like, out. Hopefully yeah. just stay out. I hope so because if you want a champion watercolor, I'm looking right. at champion of water. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's beautiful. So thank you, thank you all for joining me. Please, please come visit the yes, come Allied visit Artist. The, show. Come visit. the Allied Artist 109th <laughs> Annual Exhibition at the, show. at the Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown, Ohio. The show will be here through October 9th. And you will see, when you come see this show, you will see the award winners and the board members. And you can also go online, and online you will see all the pieces that were accepted into the show. And those will be up for one full year through September 1st, 2023. So, thank you all for joining me. Bye-bye.